questions now. Can I just ask before we start that you stick to your question and be very brief and come straight to the point because there are so many of us here and I'd like to get as many questions as possible. Gentlemen over there. I've got two questions if I may, and one in case of the 50s. I know you have your personal experience in the 50s, but I'm sure your historical knowledge is sufficient enough to uh, appreciate where I'm coming from. Um, despite all the differences, all the difference between the <coughs> Democrat Party's activities in the 50s and the AKP's uh, present activities, it is possible to argue that there are similarities. Do you think that there are such similarities? No. If you do, uh, to what extent do you think these similarities are strong enough to <coughs> question, as indeed the Democratic Party was the Democratic Party question, the political, ethical, and legal legitimacy of the present government? That's my first question. The second question relates to the foreign policy. The change in Erdogan's attitude towards Syria from uh, close support to the open hostility uh, is, is well known. What do you think is the cause of this change? Do you think it is because of the <coughs> uh, as a show towards Erdogan's advice or because of the uh, pressure put by Obama or Erdogan or another reason? Thank you. Some more questions. Sure. Probably they may overlap. Yeah. And we may save time. The gentleman just behind. Uh, while I disagree with the picture that you have depicted about the, in general, some of the intellectuals being rather disappointed with the outcome that the Ark Party has kind of found, it has, has uh, moved to the country towards, I, I really do not think that in general people were necessarily expecting them to be the, the solutions, basically, the, the, course of the nationalization of the country, why do you suppose, uh, what are your thoughts about how in the last decade of the war there hasn't been a popular, I mean, there's not got any proper democratic movement, a popular party that has actually stood for inclusive uh, principles or universalism, anything that was remote uh, from what has actually been, uh, I guess, more popular in the country for the last uh, century or so? Okay. Well, <coughs> Could you repeat the first part of the first question? part of your question? I couldn't. No, from your perspective so far, my understanding was maybe, maybe I, I misunderstand that your assessment was that in general uh, the uh, intellectuals were, were expecting so much from, from uh, just the Democratic Party, whereas obviously that didn't come to be. I, I kind of personally disagree that that was the case. I, I don't think many people are necessarily surprised at their stance right now, the authoritarian stance right now. Maybe I'm supposed to your uh, fiction. But. And the third question. You referred to a referendum. I wasn't clear whether you were referring to the new constitution because we have been hearing for some time now that Turkey wants to establish a new constitution but uh, while it was promoted in the press we never saw any text of the constitution of the new constitution one never had a chance to see the difference between the new and the old and secondly therefore my other problem what happened to the infamous Article 301? I mean, is that in the new constitution? Because that is, in a sense, the source of great undemocratic evil, which puts people in prison, uh, as you were referring to, students, etc. And finally, just another question, uh, do you have any hopes of a resolution for the Kurdish problem uh, in whatever form or shape? Thank you. There's a massive human rights problem in Turkey involving atheists, involving Alevis, involving girls, involving gays. Which party is going to tap into this and get the people behind it? <laughs> One more, gentlemen, let's break that. My question is about whether the um, statement that the conservative right, including the Islamists as well, there have been the region of the Republican regime or not. And this time the Republican regime supported it or not. It's 
historically, I would see them as a sort of the side uh, that were pursuing the project that was in the 1990s, 1919, 2021, rather than weak. They, they are a different conception of nation state and entire building compared to the uh, Republicans. And that project failed. What did it, did it succeed? So in politics, if the project failed and they export the project have lost the ground, the decision has been them, or do we look at the history from a different perspective? And I think this is a problem, not for the Western uh, audience uh, and, and uh, commentators, but also for some of the liberal uh, Democrats that we have been talking about in Turkey. Do you agree? so critical after the Prime Minister's uh, Prime Minister targeting her personally. The second part was about Syria and the gentleman asked why Turkey, how Turkey resisted first of all getting involved in Syria for so long and why is it getting involved in Syria now, right now? I'll start from the last question. Actually, uh, probably if we may have time, I may also switch to Turkish. 
to answer such questions and curiosities concerning my political position. Um, uh, I have never been a very strong supporter of Justice Development Party, but I have always been a very key supportive uh, supporter of rights and liberties of conservatives. This is how why I differed from Republicans or rigid understanding of secularism. I, I always thought that secularism is essential, undeniable precondition of democracy. But I never agreed with rigid understanding of, of secularism. And I thought it's, it's harmful for, it's an obstacle for, for democratic politics in Turkey. That is why I have been less very keen uh, very sincere, supportive of Islamists for long. And I have been supporter of lifting the ban on headscarves. I am still supporting this cause, despite of this government. And I think this government failed to keep up uh, his promises concerning religious freedoms, some of the religious freedom group. Uh, freedoms, for instance, uh, women with headscarves, I think, should be able to enter into parliament and should be able to be all sorts of professionals. I don't take uh, this division of public space, private space seriously. I think uh, headscarf women should easily participate into public space, and all that. I never change my position, neither before or after Prime Minister attacked me. It has nothing to do with that. It was totally against my criticism of his authoritarian politics concerning Kurdish question, and his uh, intolerance of me concerning my support for Kurdish politics. For Kurdish rights and liberties. And let me go back to Syrian question later. And uh, first, I want to try to reply to this question about similarities. Probably, I opened up the subject uh, that there are similarities between the Democrat Party of the 50s and the governing party, current government party. I'm not comparing only uh, the government, uh, I'm not comparing governing party with only with this uh, <coughs> Democrat party of 50s. I think that there is this, this is the beginning of, 50s is the beginning of, it's the introduction of multi-party period in Turkey. And it's, it's the beginning of, of right-wing discourse, starting, rising of right-wing discourse. And after that, this period, as you know, ended up with 1960 military coup. And then in 60s and 70s, this tradition continued under the name of Central Right Wing Party, what was the name? Adalet Party, Justice, Justice Party. And uh, uh, actually, this right wing politics were divided for the first time in mid 60s. and. Uh, Democrat Party supporters turned to be supporting three different right-wing parties. One center-right, Justice Party, one national, right-wing nationalist party, and one uh, religious conservative party. Actually, Erdogan is coming from this particular branch of right-wing politics. This is uh, Erbakan, famous Erbakan's part, Salvation Party of uh, 1970s. But I think that there are very many agreements among, more agreements or among those parties, among ultra conservatives, center rightists, and religious conservatives, than differences. So that's why Erdogan uh, can be taken as as, as the continuation or inheritor of, of 
right-wing discourse and politics starting from not only of 1950s Democrat Party, but all these traditions starting from, from Democrat Party in 50s. And indeed, he insists in being inheritor of Democrat Party. He's very proud of uh, presenting himself as, as, as the continuation of this, or you know, the, the last example of this tradition. And concerning this uh, right-wing tradition, their understanding of democracy, I mentioned of majority rule, uh, their definition of democracy, which is limited to majority role. And uh, it, it is an important aspect of right-wing understanding which of democracy, which reflected it also in, in Erdogan's era. But it's, it's not all that. There is another essential idea coming from and shared by all, all shades of right-wing political parties and discourses. Another essential aspect of the definition, peculiar definition of democracy, and that is uh, defining democracy as as um, as the rule of two sons of the country, if you like. I call it authentic representation. Uh, that they, their reading of Republican history uh, is at some stage based on a conspiracy that Ottoman Empire collapsed. It was a big loss for Turks. And then uh, Republican regime was established by a bunch of people who are basically either Jewish converts from Salonika, and Atatürk was among them, and uh, some Freemasonry uh, connections, and, uh, and all these undesirable and unrepresentative members of society who, 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 were, who cheated their nation and uh, who, who hold the power unfairly, if you like. And that's why the motto of the Democrat Party was, was now, what was that? Söz, yeter söz milletin. Enough. Uh, now the nation will speak. The nation. And the, 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 the definition of nation was Sunni Muslim Turks. This is what they meant by, by nation. And nation always meant to be Sunni Muslim. And this is where conservative right-wing politics are getting their main support, as you know, including Erdogan's party. So their understanding of democracy has always been so. That's why it's not, uh, it's a bit disappointing, but it's not that surprising to, to observe that Erdogan uh, could easily uh, switch to anti-Alevi discourse after pursuing quite tolerant politics and talk, uh, after he talked and initiated an Alevi opening. But soon after, when things didn't go well, uh, or when things didn't go as he wished, uh, he could easily switch to anti-Alevi discourse because it was in the roots of his background. Uh, it was part of, integral part of this frame of mind in Turkey. And it was not peculiar to Islamists. The whole right fingers had always been quite uh, skeptical of Alevis as not being true, true sons of the country. And uh, uh, collaborators of, of undesirable coalitions like, you know, the Republican project, Western alien project, owned by non-true sons of the country. You know what? I don't know if I make sense, but it's in, it's, it's in the roots of this this political discourse. So when you consider this background, it's not that surprising that 
how and why Erdogan well, it's a regression, definitely, but I mean, it had its roots. That's why well, it's very disappointing when you hear Erdogan or other governing party politicians to come up with this sectarian discourse, especially relating to Syrian question. You know that they're playing I mean, Erdogan and another, I think, vice president, was it? Hussein Telish, uh, was it? Who mentioned of uh, opposition party, the Republican People's Party's leader, uh, his, his Alevism, and he related his Alevism to Assad regime. 